Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you want to open up your Bibles to the book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 23. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans, yeah, chapter 7, verse 23. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody have it? Amen. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 7 verse 23. Hallelujah. We welcome everyone who may be listening by Internet, amen. And it reads, But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. We'll stop right there. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you, and Lord, we thank you for your presence tonight. Lord, we just ask, Lord, that you continue to move and operate, Lord, by your Spirit. Anoint me, Lord, to teach this message, Lord. Anoint those who may hear this, whether they're here on internet, and Lord, those on the prayer list, Lord, we ask that you anoint them, convict them, Lord, bring them to you, because time is running out. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise and glory, because you're the only one worthy of it, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. The law of the mind. We've been doing a series on the seven spiritual laws of God. When God set up this earth and humanity, He put into existence seven spiritual laws. Amen? And we find these in the Bible. The first law He put into existence was the law of God, which was given to Moses. And the law of God really deals with the sacrificial system, amen, the law of the land, and the moral law, the Ten Commandments, amen. And also there is a second spiritual law which is called the law of sin and death. And this is the second most powerful law out of the seven, amen. And then there is the law of the mind, which we're going to delve into tonight and with the, about the scripture we just read, that there is a law of the mind. Amen. And then there's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And this is really the law the Holy Spirit operates under. Amen. And this is the most powerful out of the seven. Amen. And again, as I recap, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus means the only way the Holy Spirit will work because he's the spirit of life is in Christ Jesus and it's a law. He won't work any other way but in Christ Jesus. And how do we become in Christ Jesus? Well, according to the next law, the law of faith, we have to come to God by faith and put our faith in his redemption plan, what he did at the cross. It's a spiritual law. And then there is the law of Christ, which we'll get into next week, and then the law of liberty when we'll wrap up. Amen. So those are the seven laws. Amen. And really, the law of the mind has three parts. The will, the mind, and the desires. While they are all separate, it's impossible to separate or divide them. Amen. Amen. Kind of like the soul and the spirit. While the soul and the spirit are two different things, amen, you can't, it's hard to explain or differentiate or try to divide the soul and spirit. 
Amen. It's the same with the mind, the law of the mind. You have the will, you have the mind, and you have the desires. Amen. And while they're all three different, they're all connected one way or another, and it's hard to uh, separate them. Amen. And really, the law of the mind, this is the beginning point. Amen. It's the trigger so to speak, amen, which, set, which will set off a chain reaction for everything else, amen. Again, the law of the mind deals with the will of man, the mind of man, and the desires of man, amen. And this law of the mind, this is the trigger point, amen. It's what triggers everything else, okay, do you understand it? Kind of like... If you would take a weapon, you have a trigger on the weapon. The trigger, when you pull the trigger of that weapon, amen, it sets everything else on that gun in motion. Amen. Now, I will say, the mind alone is not enough. The, li the mind alone is not enough. While it is the, the trigger and the beginning for everything, when it comes to our living for God, the, the mind itself is not enough. Kind of like a weapon. If you don't put a bullet in it and if there's no black powder in the gun, you can hit the trigger all day long, but you ain't going to get no reaction out of the gun. Amen. It's the same way with the law of the mind. It's the trigger. It's the beginning. Amen. Which will chain reaction everything else. But if you just try to use the law of the mind and that alone and there's no Holy Ghost, there's no faith, there's no nothing... Amen. It's not going to do anything. Amen. Does that make sense tonight? But it is the trigger to live for God, the law of the mind, the starting point. Amen. Just as the Bible says in Revelations chapter 22, verse 17, it says, And whosoever will, let him drink of the water of life freely. Amen. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that whosoever, amen, it starts with your will, amen, the law of the mind, amen, this is the starting point, amen, for the Christian, for the sinner or the Christian. Amen. It's the starting point for the sinner when he gets saved, and it's the starting point for the Christian during the sanctification process. Amen. When the sinner gets saved, it's because, first of all, he wanted to. His will was to come to God, to come to Jesus, to accept Christ. And once his will wanted Jesus, amen, he placed his faith in Jesus and his redemption plan, and then God went to work and made him born again. Amen. It's the same thing with the sanctification process. Amen. If somebody wants deliverance, if somebody wants a healing, if somebody needs something from the Lord, they're going to have to want it first. They're going to have to will it first. Amen. And once they have that will, amen, and that desire, then they need to place their faith in the correct object, which is the blood of Jesus. And then that will give the Holy Spirit latitude to work and go to work. Yeah. Amen. Does that make sense? Yeah. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit is not going to do something, amen, because he's not going to go against your own will. Amen. If you don't want deliverance, he won't give it to you. If you don't want healing, he won't heal you. Amen. He'll never go against your free will. Amen. So the starting point of anything, whether it be salvation, the baptism with the Holy Spirit, amen, healing, deliverance, amen, whatever the case may be, you have to want it first. Amen. And if you don't want it, God will never go against your will because he's given us free will. Amen. Amen. And so the law of the mind is the trigger, the starting point for everything in our walk. Amen? And as I said in Revelations chapter 22, verse 17, it says, And whosoever 
will. You have to want it first. Amen. And then once you want it, amen, and you want that, amen, it's your will, then you have to go what the, according to the law of faith, which means now you put your faith in the blood of Jesus. And once you put your faith in the blood of Jesus, according to the law of faith, amen, the Holy Spirit will start to move and give you grace, amen, and help you with whatever it is you need according to the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. So the law of the mind. Amen. If you get anything out of it, just get this tonight. It's the starting point. It's the trigger point for everything in your Christian walk. Amen. Whether it be healing, whether it be deliverance, whether it be uh, baptism with the Holy Spirit, whether if you're a sinner and you need salvation. Amen. The first starting point is whosoever will. Amen. Does that make sense tonight? Hallelujah. The law of the mind. Now, when dealing with sin, amen, now I'm talking about the Christian now, the born-again believer. A lot of people, and this is where the big argument has raged on within the church world for the last several decades. Is sin a choice? Amen? Yes, sin is a choice, but not the way that everyone probably thinks. Amen? What do you mean? Here's what's been taught the last 30 to 40 years within our church doors, amen, which has been actually the wrong way to look at it. A lot of pastors and teachers and preachers over the last 20, 30, 40 years have taught, amen, at salvation God gives you a super willpower. Amen? Now that you're born again, they say, well, God's now, you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, maybe. You even speak in tongues, amen. You may even be used by the gifts of the Spirit, amen. And now all of a sudden you have a super willpower and you can overcome anything. And then once they think they have a super willpower, they now have, the decision, I can say yes to sin, I can say no to sin. Amen. And if a believer does sin, it's because of the choice they made. Amen. And then after that, it show, then people will say, well, this shows that a person wasn't really sincere, didn't love the Lord to begin with. Amen. That's the wrong concept and that's the wrong idea. Amen. And that's what's been taught for the last 20, 30, 40 years. That you have some kind of super willpower and by your own might and, might and strength and ability and willpower that you can overcome whatever it is Satan throws against you and whatever sin comes your way. Amen. Well, if that's the case, then why, oh why, do we have thousands upon thousands, probably millions upon millions of Christians stuck in bondage? Amen. Amen. Because the answer is, the willpower alone isn't enough. It's not enough. Just as we read, amen, in verse 23, it says, But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity. Amen. To the law of sin, which is in my members. Amen. If you notice here, it says it's warring against Paul's mind and he's losing the battle. Amen. He's trying with all his might. He's trying with all his ability. He's trying with all his willpower. But he's losing. He's losing the battle. Because in 23 it says, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. Yes. And bringing me into captivity. It's bringing him into captivity. He's losing the fight against sin. Amen. Yes. 
And yet we know he's trying with everything in his might, his strength, his willpower to try to fight against us, but he's losing. Well, how do you know that? Because in Romans 7, 18, he says, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwells no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. So we see in verse 18, his will is present. He wants to serve God. He wants to keep the commandments. He wants to keep the law. He wants to do everything that pleases God. His will is present there. And he's trying with all his willpower to live a holy and righteous life. But in verse 23, we see he's losing the battle. Because he says, there is another law in my members, talking about the law of sin and death that we went over a couple Thursday nights ago. Warring against the law of his mind. Amen. And bringing him into captivity once again to the law of sin, which is in his members. So we see from Romans 7, amen, Paul losing the fight against sin. Amen. Oh, he loves the Lord. How do you know that? Because he said the will is present with him. Amen. He says, uh, I, the things I do, I don't understand. The things, and the things I don't want to do, I, I'm doing. And the things I do want to do, I'm not doing. And I, I don't understand this. And he says, for I know that in my flesh dwells no good thing. And I want to please God so badly, but I don't know how to perform it. Amen. A lot of people think that Paul wrote this Romans 7 about his experience before salvation, but that's not correct. Amen. Well, how do you know that? Because any sinner loves sin. And a sinner is not going to try to fight against sin. Amen. Now, a Christian, on the other hand, who loves the Lord, hates sin. And every time a believer sins against God's word, amen, it's more than they can bear. And so they do everything they can to try to fight against those temptations, those lusts, those desires. Amen. And we see Paul here. Whatever temptations or lusts or whatever sins, bondages he was dealing with, he was fighting with all his might to try to overcome it. And he couldn't. Amen. Well, how do you know that, Brother Brad? Because in verse 24, it says, O wretched man that I am. He says, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? So what are you saying? That doesn't say, who shall save me? He's already saved. Amen. Amen. He doesn't say, oh wretched man, who shall save me from this body? He's already saved. But he's saying, oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me? Amen. From this body, from the body of this death, who's going to deliver me out of this bondage of this law of sin and death that is in my members? Amen. And yet, the church world for the last 30, 40 years have taught that you get a super willpower and if you just get filled with the Holy Spirit, you speak in tongues, all your problems are over, all the bondages are over, all the sin is over. Amen. And if you're just born again, God gives you a super willpower and you can just overcome anything and you can say yes or no to any sin. That's false. That's false. I'm, now that shocks a lot, amen. It's going to shock a lot on internet too, amen. But that's false. When you get saved and born again, God doesn't give you a super willpower. You have the same willpower you had before conversion, amen. Amen. Yes, the sin nature is broken, amen. When you get saved, amen, the sin nature is broken, okay? But the problem is the flesh, due to the fall, still has a lot of junk in it. We still have a lot of junk in us. While the sin nature is broken at salvation, amen, we still have a lot of junk in our flesh, and our flesh always wants to cry for things that are unlawful. 
Amen. That may go against God's word. Amen. And then when the Christian tries to fight against his own flesh using the willpower and say, I'm not going to do that, they find themselves struggling and they, they win for a little while. They'll open their Bible. They'll read a little more. They'll pray a little more. They'll fast a little more. But then sooner or later... They give out, amen, and they give up, and the sin takes them over. And what they had been fighting against for so long, and while they was winning for a while, they start failing and losing ground and losing the battle. Amen. And why is that happening? Amen. You may be struggling with something yourself, and you've been trying to overcome it with your own willpower, and your own might and strengths and abilities, and you're losing. Why is that? Amen. Because when a Christian misplaces faith and tries to use willpower, self, spiritual disciplines, whatever you do, amen, and you put your faith in that, you will find sin overcoming you and you, instead of you overcoming it. Amen. And you find yourself stuck in bondage and don't know how to get out. Oh, don't get me wrong. Amen. You want to serve God. You want to do what's right. Amen. The will is present. Just like with what Paul said. The will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find now. Amen. And that's where many Christians are today. Amen. That's where many Christians are today. And we see, amen, with this law of the mind, that it's not strong enough to overcome sin. Amen. If Paul, who was probably the most Christ-like Christian that's ever walked the face of the earth, couldn't overcome sin by his own willpower, where does that leave us? Amen. While the law of the mind is important, it's the starting point, it's the trigger that sets off everything else. But the mind and the willpower alone is not enough. And if you rely on your willpower, amen, you will fail, just like Paul was failed. And you'll see yourself being brought back into captivity of sin once again. And you'll start seeing those bondages and that sin start to rule in your heart and in your life once again, taking up strongholds in you. Amen. Amen. So, going back to my question, is sin a choice? The choice isn't, do I sin or don't I sin, amen? The choice isn't, do I say yes or no to sin, amen? Your choice, amen, is what do I trust in to overcome sin, amen? Does that make sense tonight? Now listen to that again. The choice you have when it comes to sin, amen, whatever the bondage may be, whatever the problem you may be facing, that's whether it's in your heart or in your life, amen, the choice you have is not do I say yes or no to sin, amen, because if you try, if you try to say no to sin, amen, what you're going to do is you're going to use your willpower and you're going to find yourself in Romans chapter 7 verse 23, just like Paul. And you will find yourself warring against the law of sin and death. And you will eventually find yourself losing the battle. Bringing you back into captivity. So the choice isn't do I say yes or no to sin. The choice you have when it comes to sin. Amen. Is what do I trust in to overcome it. Amen. What do I trust in to overcome sin. Does that make sense tonight? The only thing that will overcome it, just as I said two Thursday nights ago, is the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit is the only thing 
that can overcome sin. And the only way for him to move, to overcome it for you, amen, is what we taught about two Thursday nights ago. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So the only way to overcome it, whatever problem you may be facing, is by faith and grace. Faith and grace in in God's redemption plan. That's what the law of faith states that you need to have your faith in. And that's what the Holy Spirit, the law of the Holy Spirit says that you have to have your faith in in order to make you free. Amen. The only way to be in Christ Jesus according to the law of faith is by putting your faith and trust in God's redemption plan, the blood of Jesus. Amen. And when you're in Christ Jesus, then the law of the Holy Spirit, the law of life, the spirit of life says since you're in Christ Jesus now, he'll now make you free from the law of sin and death. But when you take your faith out of that, amen, and put it in anything else, what you're doing is trusting in your own self, whether it be your willpower, your works, your disciplines, whatever it may be. And what you'll find uh, happening, amen, is the same thing that happened to Paul in verse 23. Amen. The law of sin and death will war against you, and it's more powerful than you or me. Amen. And you'll find yourself going backwards into captivity once again. Amen. Amen. Why? Because when you put your faith in self or your own willpower, amen, grace is frustrated and the law of sin will bring you back into captivity of sin once again. Amen. Now don't get me wrong. Again, the law of the mind is the starting point for everything. The willpower is important. Amen. It is important. It plays a crucial part. Amen. Because it's the trigger point. It's what starts everything. You have to want it first. You have to want to desire it first. Amen. But then comes the next question. What are you trusting in? Are you trusting in your own willpower? Are you trusting in your own works? Are you trusting in your disciplines? Are you trusting in... The things you do, are you trusting in the rituals you go through? Amen. Or are you trusting in God's redemption plan? Amen. And if you're not trusting in God's redemption plan, amen, you could try to say no to sin all day long. And you may win for a while. Amen. But sooner or later, it's going to bring you back into captivity, even though the will is present. Amen. But the will alone is not enough. While it's important and it's the starting point and it's what triggers everything else. Amen. But the will alone is not enough. And once you will something or you want something, then you have to place your faith properly in Jesus and what he did at the cross. Amen. Or God's redemption plan or the blood, whatever you want to say. Amen. And that's the next step. And then the next step after that is the Holy Spirit starts giving you grace and mercy and starts freeing you from things. Amen. The law of the mind triggers it. You then place your faith in God's redemption plan according to the law of faith. And then once that happens, then the Holy Spirit goes to work according to the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which will make you free from the law of sin and death. Amen. See how all these laws, spiritual laws, tie together? Amen. Again, the law of the mind is important. It's the starting point. It's the trigger point. Because your will has to come first. You have to want it. You want to have to desire it. Amen. And then once that happens, amen, you place your faith out of self and put it into God's redemption plan. Amen. According to the law of faith. And when that happens, then the Holy Spirit will go to work according to Romans 8, 2. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Amen. That is good news, amen? The struggle, amen? We are not to fight against sin. Nowhere in the Bible does it say for us to fight against sin. Amen? You ain't going to find it. You can go through the whole Bible and you ain't going to find anywhere where the Lord tells you you have to fight sin on a daily basis. Amen. Why? Because this is Satan's territory. Amen. And you will lose 
sooner or later if you try to struggle against sin. Amen? Now, that doesn't mean we have a license to sin. So don't get that impression. It doesn't give us a license to sin and say it's okay to go out and sin and do whatever we want. That's not what I'm saying. Amen? But at the same time, we're not supposed to struggle against sin. Why is that? Because 2,000 years ago, Jesus already fought this fight for us. Amen. It's been, put in the to- it's been put on the cross. It's been put in the tomb. And he rose three days later. The battle against sin has already been won. 2,000 years ago, this fight is over. Amen. Does that make sense? This fight is over. The fight against sin is over. Amen. (laughs) I can imagine. Amen. During the Civil War, after the white flags were up, there were still people fighting. Amen. After months after, and they say, what are you doing? The war is already over. Amen. Been won. Amen. That's what the Lord's saying to us at times, amen, in these last days. The Holy Spirit's, amen, speaking to some of us right now. He's saying, what are you doing? The war's over. Amen. It's been fought. It's been won. It's been over. Amen. The war has been fought and been won for us on our behalf 2,000 years ago at Calvary's cross. Amen. Turn with me to Colossians. Chapter 2. Amen. Verse 14. It says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Amen. The battle's already been won. Jesus already nailed all your sins, all your problems to the cross. Amen. And he's triumphed over every power, every principality, every demon in hell has been defeated at Calvary. Amen. So you don't have to fight against sin anymore. The battle's already won. Amen. If you try to on your own self, own willpower, own works, own disciplines, try to fight against sin, you're fighting on Satan's territory and you will lose and you will see yourself being brought back into captivity, into bondage once again. And what the Holy Spirit is trying to say in these last days is he's trying to tell me and he's trying to tell you the battle's already been won. You're fighting the wrong fight. Amen. Amen. Because it's been won 2,000 years ago. Now do you believe it? Now do you believe it? Now this is the fight we're supposed to fight. Do you believe that tonight? What I just said. You don't have to struggle against sin. Because Jesus has already conquered sin. He's already broke sins back at the cross. And all you have to do is walk in faith. Now do you believe it tonight? Now, there, now here comes the battle that you're supposed to fight. This is New Covenant terms now. Fight the good fight of faith. Do you believe what I just said? Hallelujah. Now, if you don't, you're going to find yourself using your willpower again, using your works, using your disciplines, and you're going to find yourself struggling against sin once again if you don't believe what I just said. Yes. And you will find yourself going backwards instead of forwards. How do you know that? Because the law of the mind isn't strong enough. Amen? It's a law. You can try everything you want. And while your will is present, amen, you'll find yourself going back into captivity. Amen. The only fight we're to fight in the Bible is the fight of faith. This is the new covenant terms and this is where you'll have victory. Amen. Faith in God's redemption plans allows the Holy Spirit and grace to flow. And sin shall not 
have dominion over you. Amen. Amen. Sin shall not have dominion over you. Now, I didn't say the fight of faith is going to be a, amen, walk in the park. Amen. But if you deny yourself, amen, while the will is present, amen, you deny yourself knowing there's nothing you can do to overcome sin, but believe Jesus has already overcame it for you at the cross. Amen. And believe in that every day. Take up your cross daily. And then just follow the leadings and guidance of the Holy Spirit. And you will see little by little the Holy Spirit going to work, giving you grace. Taking that sin problem out of your life until it's not there anymore. And it will not have dominion over you. Amen. And you'll see more Christ-likeness coming out. And you'll see more fruit of the Spirit coming out. And you'll see less of self coming out and less of sin coming out. Amen. Does that make sense? Sin shall not have dominion over you. Now, don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean we're going to be sinless or we're going to be perfect. We're going to make mistakes. But the key point is that sin won't have dominion over you anymore. It won't rule your life anymore. It won't keep you in bondage anymore. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. The law of the mind. Amen. While it's important, it's the starting point. It's the trigger for everything else. Amen. But it alone itself alone is not enough. Amen. You have to have your faith properly placed in the redemption plan, the blood of Jesus, according to the law of faith. And when that happens, amen, the Holy Spirit goes to work and frees you from whatever bondage you have. Amen. You see the chain reaction. The law of the mind, the trigger point, the will. Whosoever will. Okay? You want it. Okay? That sets off a chain reaction. Now, you start placing faith in God's redemption plan. Amen. And when that happens, here's another chain reaction that happens. Now the Holy Spirit and grace starts flowing because the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made you free. Amen. See the chain reaction just like, like I said with a gun. Amen. You pull the trigger. Amen. The hammer goes forward. The explosive powder gets hit and then the bullet goes forward. Yes. Amen. Amen. It's the same concept. Amen. In the spiritual sense. You pull the trigger. I want it Lord. Amen. Amen. And that faith hammer boom, comes down and then that Holy Ghost power comes out. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Awesome. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. But again, if there's no powder in the gun, amen, you can hit the trigger all day long. I ain't going to do nothing alone. Amen. Praise the Lord. The law of the mind, while it's the starting point for everything, amen, it's the trigger. You have to want it first. You have to will it first. Amen. That's why so many people, when they hear about the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, many Christians will say, well, if God really wants me to have it, He'll just give it to me. Amen. No, He won't. Why not? Because you have to will it first. You have to want it first. Amen. Spiritual law. It's a trigger point. Amen. Same with the healing. Same with the bondage, same with deliverance, same with whatever it is you need. Amen. The idea of just saying, well, if God wants me to have it, he would have given it to me. Amen. No, you have to will it first. You have to want it. Amen. And then when you want it, then comes the point of where you place your faith. And when you place your faith in God's redemption plan, then you'll see the Holy Spirit go to work. Because these are all spiritual laws set up. Amen. The last point I want to get to tonight. Amen. The last two points actually. A lot of Christians will say, well, what about the mind? How does God renew the mind? Amen. Since we're talking about the law of the mind. 
Amen. When somebody gets saved, amen, the Lord gives them a new heart, a clean heart, and renews their mind. Amen. When someone gets saved at salvation, amen, the mind starts to be renewed. Amen. Now, this doesn't mean it's done overnight. And it doesn't mean it's done quickly. Amen. But at salvation, amen, that's where the education begins. Amen. It's the trigger point. The law of the mind is the trigger point. Amen, whosoever will for everything. And not only that, amen, when you get saved, the first thing he does is he gives you a new heart, amen, and he renews your mind, amen. Now the education begins. Amen, it's not done overnight and it's not done quickly. Turn with me to Romans chapter 12. Amen. Verse 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay, now he's writing to the church in Rome. Amen. So if your mind was renewed overnight, amen, and everything was completely renewed, completely done that quick, then why would he be writing to Christians saying, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind? Meaning it's a lifelong process as well, just along with your sanctification process. Renewing your mind, changing your thinking. Amen. We were rotten old sinners, and all we had on our mind and thought was sin, 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 sin. Amen. And then at salvation, boom, the Holy Spirit comes into us. Changes our heart. Changes our desires. And now all of a sudden, amen, you're thinking different things. Amen. But there's still a lot that has to be unlearned and be relearned. Amen. So... While the renewing process starts at salvation, it's not done overnight and it's not done quickly. Amen. Why? Because there's a lot of junk that we have to unlearn over the years when we were sinners and have to relearn. Amen. And so the Holy Spirit, amen, even in the sanctification process, a lifelong process, is constantly trying to unlearn things that we have learned over the years and try to relearn. Amen. For example, I'll just throw this out. Many schools teach evolution. Amen. And when someone who's a sinner who believes in evolution comes to Christ and truly is born again, amen, and then they read that first uh, verse in Genesis 1-1, God created the heavens and the earth. Oh boy, there has to be some unlearning of all the evolution crap first. And then gets relearned. Oh, well, it's all by creation now. Amen. Does that make sense? And when one comes to Christ, the education begins. Amen. I don't know how many... I've had 18 years of religious uh, school and catechism and studies. And there was some good points in there, amen. But there was also a lot of things I had to unlearn. Amen. When I really truly got born again, that I had to unlearn what I learned over the years and relearn all over again. Amen. And how is the mind renewed then? If it's a lifelong process, amen, and it's not an overnight thing or done quickly, and it starts at conversion, then how is the mind renewed? It's done by the Holy Spirit through the Word of God. Amen. It's done by the Holy Spirit through the Word of God. Amen. Whether it be 
reading your word in your own personal study or whether you're sitting in a service listening to the preacher read the word and give expository teaching on it. Amen. The Holy Spirit will take that, will anoint it, amen, and will give you revelation of it. Amen. That's how the Holy Spirit renews your mind in this sanctification process. Amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the Word of God. Amen. So when you read the Word of God or when you go and listen to a preacher who's truly preaching the whole counsel of God, amen, the Holy Spirit will anoint that, amen, and He'll give you revelation and give understanding in your heart and soul and spirit. And it'll be like a light bulb coming on, amen. That's revelation. That's revelation, and that's how God renews your mind. Amen. I can't... I myself can't give you revelation on the Word of God. I can't. I can't take it into your heart and soul and spirit to make you understand that Word of God. Amen. I can preach till I'm blue in the face, but you ain't going to understand it until the Holy Spirit, amen, gives you revelation about it or gives you understanding about it in your own heart and soul and spirit. Amen. It takes the Holy Spirit to give you revelation and illuminate the Word of God to your heart so that you can understand it. I don't know how many times where I've read a verse over and over and over and over and didn't really understand it, amen. And then as I would read again, the Holy Spirit would move upon me and give me revelation on it and it would illuminate to what that was really saying to me in my own walk, amen. And it was like a light bulb came on. I said, I get it. I got it. I understand it. That's revelation. Amen. And that's how he renews your mind. It's by revelation through the Holy Spirit, by reading the Word of God. Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. That's the only way any Christian can understand the Bible. Is by the Holy Spirit giving them understanding. Amen. Even the Word of God says, I has not seen nor ear heard. Amen. But it's the Spirit that reveals the things to us. Yea, the deep things of God. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit has to reveal everything to us in the Word of God. Amen. Jesus asked Peter, who do you say I am? Amen. And Peter said, you're the Messiah. <laughs> and Jesus told Peter, this was revealed to you, <laughs> hallelujah, by the Lord. And it's the same way to us, amen. The Lord has to illuminate this word of God and show us in our hearts so that we may understand it. Amen. And that's how the mind is renewed. Hallelujah. And the last point I want to get to as I close a lot of people wonder, well, how does a Christian grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ? And how do they become a mature Christian? Amen. In a sense, that a degree of maturity. I'll say this first, and people are going to get mad at me, and I may probably have some on the internet that may get upset, but that's okay, it's the truth. Maturity isn't determined by your age. Amen. How long you've been saved. Being used in the gifts of the Spirit. Your education level. And your spiritual disciplines. Now that's going to make people mad. Amen. But it's the truth. Your degree of your spiritual maturity is not dependent on these things. Amen. Just because somebody's 80, 90 years old doesn't mean they're a mature Christian. Amen. Just because someone's been saved 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 40, 50, 60 years doesn't mean they're a mature Christian. Just because somebody's used in the gifts of the Spirit, tongues and interpretation, or gifts of healing, doesn't mean they're a mature Christian. Amen. 
Just because you have a PhD of theology does not mean you are a mature Christian. And just because you pray five hours a day, fast six days out of the week, amen, read two hours of your Bible every day doesn't mean you're a mature Christian. Amen. I'll just say that being used in the gifts of the Spirit does not mean you are a mature Christian. Amen. I've seen people be used in the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. And see them outside of service and they don't act very mature. <laughs> Amen. Why? Because it's a gift. Amen. Gifts are free. Gifts are gifts. Amen. I've seen people fill with the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues, treat their other brothers and sisters worse than what a, just a normal born-again Christian would. Maturity is not precicated on the gifts. It's not precicated on your age. It's not precicated on how long you've been saved. It's not precicated on whether you have a master's of divinity or a PhD of divinity. And it's not based on your spiritual disciplines. Amen. Amen. So, how is maturity, spiritual maturity, based on? Amen. Oh, look at that. I ran out of time. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, I'll give you the answer. <laughs> It'll be back next Thursday. <laughs> Spiritual maturity is dependent upon the knowledge and your understanding of the cross of Christ. I'll say that again. The more that you understand and know about the price that was really paid at the cross, amen, will depend what your spiritual maturity is. Amen. Why is that? Because the cross makes you meek. The cross makes you humble. The cross gets self out of the way. The cross gives man no glory but all the glory to Christ and what he has done. Amen. The cross gives healings. The cross gives gifts. The cross gives salvation. The cross gives sanctification. The cross. Amen. The cross, the cross, the cross. And the more you understand, it's the cross. I'm not talking about a wooden beat. I'm talking about what Jesus did at the cross. And the more you understand that, the more spiritually mature you will become. Amen. Amen. Why? Because when the more you understand about the cross, the more self gets out of the way, the more pride gets out of the way, and the more meekness comes, the more humility comes, the more humbleness comes, the more love comes. Amen. That is what spirit, true spiritual maturity is. Amen. Your knowledge and understanding of the cross. Amen. That's why the uh, church world as a whole is in such a mess. Amen. That's why we have those, amen, who've been saved for how long, but they're going to all different fads. Amen. Why? Because they're still babes on milk. They don't know anything about the blood anymore. They don't understand the cross anymore. They don't understand how important it really is. They don't understand how it brings salvation, how it brings sanctification, how it brings healing, how it brings gifts, how it brings everything. And they don't understand that. So they're going to every fad, being tossed to and fro. And they're still babes. Still babes. Amen. Maturity is based on your knowledge and understanding of the blood of Jesus. Amen. It's just not a elementary thing. Amen. Many Christians I would hear, I'd say something about the cross, and they say, well, that's elementary. I've got to move on to other things. Well, then they don't understand the cross very well. Amen.
They don't understand the cross for oil. They may understand it for salvation, but they don't understand it for anything else. And therefore, they're still babes in Christ on milk. Amen. When you understand the blood is not just for salvation, but sanctification, healing, deliverance, the gifts of the Spirit, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the grace of God and how it moves. When you understand how the blood ties in and is for all of those things, the more you will grow in the grace. I said the more you will grow in the grace because that's the only way you get grace. The more you will grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Would you stand? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The law of the mind. Hallelujah. The law of the mind. It's the starting point for everything. You have to want it first. Your will has to be there. Amen. And when you have that will, amen, you'll start thinking about it in the mind and you'll start desiring it in your heart and soul. It's the trigger for everything else. And once you want it, amen, then you place your faith in God's redemption plan. Because that's what the law of faith states. And the law of the spirit of life will go to work because you're now in Christ Jesus. And he will make you free from whatever bondage that you're being held captivity to. Just like Paul was made free. Amen. I thank God. Amen. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. That I serve the law with my mind. Amen. But with the flesh, I serve sin. Amen. This is as far as we ourselves can go. This is the last point I want to make. The Lord just brought this back to me. Amen. He says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Amen. The only way us ourselves can serve the law of God, amen, is by wanting, willing. That's as far as we can go with it. The will. Does that make sense? Amen. When it comes to about keeping the law, can we keep the law ourselves? No, we can't. The only part that we can keep ourselves is wanting to keep it. The will. The law of the mind. This is as far as we can go with it. That's what the law of the mind states. That with our mind, we can will to want to keep God's laws. And that's all the farther we can go ourselves. That's it. That's all the farther you can go. That's what the law of the mind states. Amen. That's what the law of the mind is. That's revelation right there, church. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost renewing the mind. Revelation illuminating the word of God just as I was reading it. The law of the mind states that all we can do with the law of God is will it. Amen. That's as far as we can go with it. He says, and the rest has to be through Jesus Christ our Lord. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the answer right there. You want victory over sin? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, the law of the mind, I can will it. I serve the law of God with my mind by willing it, wanting to keep God's laws. But if I try it through the flesh, just as the last part says, I'll serve the law of sin. Amen. So the only thing we can do, amen, with the law of the mind is will to keep God's laws, want to keep God's laws. That's all the farther we can go with it. And then faith steps in according to the law of faith. We put our faith in God's redemption plan. And then when that triggers the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which will make us free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you.
Lord, I thank you for this teaching tonight, Lord, and I ask that you take this message to the hearts of your people, Lord, and illuminate and give them revelation and renew their mind, Lord, and show them, Lord, how important the law of the mind is, Lord. It's the trigger point. It's the will. It's the start of every Christian when it comes to being free from the law of sin and death. But the will alone isn't enough. All we can do is want to be free. All we can do is want to keep God's laws. But then faith has to step in and God's redemption plan and the Holy Ghost will go to work and give us grace. And Lord, I ask that you take this message to your people, Lord, and illuminate it to them, Lord, and give them revelation and let them know that the cross is the answer. Amen. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless.